Hi everyone and welcome. In this series of videos, we're going to show you how we at Artling use event storming to explore a domain and design our bounded context. I'm Thomas. And I'm he. In this uh, first video, we're going to do a big picture event storm where we go on a very high level, but model a process from beginning to end. Enjoy. Let's kick it off with uh, a scenario. We're going to pick a very specific scenario out of a very broad domain. Um, so let's just start with which scenario we're going to pick. Okay, so the thing is, we are going to build um, some software for a, a bike sharing company. Uh, we call it Shuringo. You can you can see that at the name of the motherboard. And um, what we're going to focus on um, today is actually doing the right and paying for the right. Okay. All right. I, I think it's okay to call renting it a bike, but we it's not a term that we're actually using that much in our domain. So maybe at some point we need to think about a better term, but, but let's, Let's keep it for now and then we can maybe discover better terms along the way. Okay. So I think it's useful if we start um, at the point where the, yeah, our customers buy a bundle or something. So they need to, um, so they don't pay with like credit card immediately for their rights they have to buy a bundle um, that bundle contains credits and they use those bundles to pay for rights. Okay. Right. Okay. Purchase bundle. Okay. Once, once they have a bundle, um, mm -hmm. they're free to start, uh, any rights that they want. And how, um, like, how do they do that? Um, do they look at nearby uh, bikes or um, like, how do they find the bike? So uh, that's an interesting question. So the, the thing is we have uh, bike stations around city. So um, th that's why maybe renting a bike is not the best term because it's really focused on uh, short term rides within one city. Um, and we have multiple, well, we have lots of stations of bikes in, in a city. Um, and um, we have an app. And on that app, they can see nearby stations with uh, bikes that have availability or w stations that have bikes available. So, rider found bike? Well, they don't really find a bike. I would say they find a station with a, with an available bike because all our bikes are the same. So it's not that uh, they can pick one specific bike. Uh, they, they say, I, I want to start. They, they start the ride at the station. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, um, that, that seems okay um the thing is um a lot lots of things happen in between the rider found the station and the ride started well lots of things at least a couple of things um we charge per minute that's the like we, we don't charge for distance we only charge in credits per minute um but depending on when and where you start you are going to we, we're going to have different prices um actually that's something that our sales and marketing departments are are playing with and they want to probably experiment with different kind of prices at different moments and times okay. um but but that means that when they found the station that we have to like yeah determine what the price is going to be and that the rider also needs to accept that price per minute uh, before they can actually start the ride. 
Um, also, of course, at the station, the bikes are locked and it's the station that can unlock. So every bike sits within one slot um, where, where the bike is where the bike, bike is locked and it's charging because they're electrical bikes. Mm -hmm. um, and so, um, yeah, the, when the rider approved the price and the station unlocked, uh, that, that, that cannot happen like that. We first need to prove, we need to have a proof that the rider is at the station to unlock the bike so that they cannot, yep. they, they cannot like, we, we, we don't want to have the bike unlocked when they're still walking over or whatever. Um, yep. so we need some way of proving that, um, that the, yeah that the rider is at the station. And how do you do that right now? Is there Cur a... currently um, every station has um, a display um, mm -hmm. and it shows um, yeah, when, once you're there, you can click on a button and then it generates a QR code. And with the app, you scan that QR code and that's our validation that you're there. Um, well, the QR code, uh, the app checks the QR code, it gets validated on the server. And then we actually, uh, eh, then we can unlock the bike. Um, one, one thing that's probably important here as well is that the, um, that you start. So we, we don't have reservations. Mm -hmm. eh? So we don't do any reservations at all. Um, but that means like, yeah, what if you look at the app and um, yeah, you, you start at home, you need you need a bike to get to work. You look at the app and there are only one or two bikes available at that station. Um, maybe you actually want to start paying already for the bike so that no one else can take it. So what we actually do is um, the action of approving the price is not only well it shows a button in the uh, well we still need to determine the ui a little bit but the idea mm -hmm. is that we show a button like okay i accept the price and i start the ride and when you start the ride we yeah that bike or the station will select the bike so that it's not longer available for anyone else that means you already start paying for the ride even though you might not be at the station yet, but your time starts at that point as well. Okay. Would you say that accepting the price and um, a ride started at station happens simultaneously? Or is it more that um, whenever a ride rider accepts a price, a ride will start? I, I, that's something we need to um, decide on like that that is not something i i worry too much about right now the the only thing is it's not possible that the ride is started before the price was accepted so this order yeah. uh is okay for me but the other way around that's not okay for me so either it's like this so that they happen simultaneously that's okay or maybe for we can make it a little bit more safe and do it like this for now but we can um yeah maybe see how we're going to design it later on when we're looking at uh yeah going deeper into the example okay, okay. um so just for the people um who are watching this uh so what i did is i wrote down that we have to decide um i also wrote down that um, you know, right can be started before scanning the QR code that, so that they are somewhat in the right order, uh, but that we don't know how exactly this works yet. Um, and because you add this remark, you can then move on and get a better understanding of everything that happens after and then go into detail wherever needed and start making design decisions. Yeah, good points. Right. Good points. I think um, just as a remark for me as a domain expert, I'm also maybe providing sometimes a little bit too much information already, but that's going to happen in the real world as well. Um, I do try to stop and see like, okay, we, we need to move on 
um, towards like more of the end. But um, in the real world, you, you will definitely find that, uh, yeah, you need to not necessarily manage your domain expert, but at least facilitate so that um, when they go too deep into some topics that, that it is not relevant yet, or that maybe is out of scope that you try to get them on, pa uh, on path again. Okay, so um, when a station unlock the bike, um, maybe some more context here is, um, yeah, all the slots have numbers. And so the station will say you get a uh, bike number at uh, parked at slot number five. Um, and there will also ping a light there so that it's clear uh, which, which bike you need to take. Um, so when it's unlocked, you can pick it up. You can pick the bike up um, and you can drive around with it basically for how long you want. Uh, again, the only remark we have here, the, the typical use case is for short rides within a city. So that means five minutes to like half an hour are probably going to be like 90% of all the bike rides that we that are being done by people. Um, so when they picked up the bike, they can drive around. We don't, at the moment, we don't have any tracking. So let's keep all tracking of the bikes out of scope. Um, and then at some point, they just place a bike back at the station. Um, and the station will automatically lock it and, and you're right. Yeah, so it will lock, uh, it will, when you place it correctly, it will lock, it will start uh, charging and it will end your ride. So it's also the station that locks the bike? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's basically, it's in a slot that automatically, uh, like the hardware of the slot and the hardware of the station, they communicate with each other um, and they, um, yeah. They, they, yeah, it locks and that means your ride was stopped. And at that point in time, your time stops running as well. Yeah. Um, maybe I, I see you like, I, I think the, the charging, the fact that, um, I, I don't know if you wrote it down somewhere, but the fact that the bikes, uh, need to charge is probably going to be, uh, relevant as well. Um, but that's, that's, uh, maybe not something we, yeah, we need to manage right now. Okay. So, uh, when the ride was stopped, the, um, yeah, the price for the ride was calculated and credits are going to be deducted from your bundle. Okay. Um, so we have the word price um, here twice now. Um, so we talk about the price was determined oh. and price was calculated, but I feel those are two different concepts. Yeah, this is actually, this one here is the rate per minute. This is how we call it right now. And this is, yeah, th this is actually the price. Um, maybe we call it the right price. Um, but price is, price is okay for me, but it's mostly the first one that's incorrect. So this should be B, yeah, rate per minute determined and then rider accepted uh, rate per minute. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, so that one we can keep as a uh, price. Yeah, I think right price you can uh, just remove um, uh, just remove it maybe, or we can we can add a glossary if if we say um, if we think some terms are useful to uh, remember. So uh, let's say the rate per minute and then the price. Um, those are already things that we have and I also see the rider mm -hmm. uh, feel that you picked that one but I can agree with it 
yeah, we can add more when we find them. Okay, so that's basically the main process that we have. Yeah, so nothing, well, stuff happens, but if we talk about, you know, um, they want to get a bike to drive around the city, like deducting the credits, that's where it ends. That That's the happy part, yes. Yeah. That That is what we would like to happen in almost all cases. All right. Um, so I'll actually like, trying to find the right uh, icon oh, for yeah. that. Um, oh, oh, yeah. oh, you already did. Yeah, um, the, the thing is, it's contact. probably, uh, I would probably put it here because, oh. um, yeah, the, the bundle that's purchased is uh, relevant information but it's um, not really part of the flow um, that we're doing uh, the buying of of purchasing of bundles is going to be something different than um, yeah than actually the right now what we put between um, play and stop I'll actually I'll add these to the legend as well um, those are like symbols to indicate this is the end and or the start of and the end of a process. All right. So now we actually have a very high level overview of the entire process from the first thing that happens to the last thing that happens. As you may have noticed, um, the language is still all over the place. We're not paying that much attention to it. Uh, yet, and that's actually okay because it's it's more important that everyone in the room actually has that high level overview, so that you have a starting point to start digging deeper uh, into how everything works, and that's what we will do in the next video.